Welcome back to Zero Tolerance for another episode of Learn to Burn with Practical Machinist. Today's episode, we're gonna talk about copper versus graphite. Which one do you use and why? We're gonna compare high-end graphite and high-end copper in this episode. So the best wear you can get without having anything impregnated in the, in the this is actually gonna be POCO 3. And we're gonna try to learn as we go because we don't use copper in our shop much at all, um, mostly for possibly burning carbide, um, we would use copper. <clears throat> but in most cases, we would typically use gar uh, graphite and use a lot of it. So usually instead of three electrodes, you need 10 electrodes. Um, so we're gonna explore these, the difference in these two and you'll come along with us. Let's talk about the cost of these three different materials. This is US 800, we get it from Belmont. It's what we mostly use. We usually, we also use POCO 200. Um, and this particular size blank, it's saw cut. It's about three quarter inch by three and an eighth by 24 inches long. And this piece is roughly 60 to $70. Um, the tungsten carb, I'm sorry, the tungsten, the copper tungsten, this one piece right here is an inch by inch square by eight inches and it is uh, has a cost of 265 bucks so this is very expensive and then the poco 3 which we do use in very uh delicate and small type applications but but not very often this piece is is um you know over just over a hundred dollars in cost so i just want to give everybody an idea what what the actual cost of these materials are and we will go from there I want to describe why we use graphite in our shop. It's easy to cut. It's how I learned in the trade. Um, it's fast. Typically when we need to burn something, it, you got to get it going. And usually the burning process itself takes long. So getting them cut fast means a lot. Um, the newer machines uh, can use a lot less electrodes, but there's also different grades of, of graphite, as I mentioned, that can do di different things. I don't want to categorize all carbon should be one thing. Um, there's different applications for each one. They have different costs and they do different things based on your needs. So what we do here typically, we can get away uh, with a POCO 200 or US 800 equivalent um, for most 90% of what we do here. And accuracy, dimensionally, it, it is, it's, it's stable and it works. And we're comfortable doing it that way. Here we have uh, two different style cutters. One right here, this is a wooden cutter used for cutting steel or the copper same type of cutters for cutting copper as you would for steel. And this is a diamond coated um, cutter for cutting carbon. It's much more expensive. It has, you can almost feel the sandpapery like feel, but it's a, it's a diamond uh, vapor blast that's bonded to the carbide. I'm not sure how they do it, but um, you can almost feel it on the cutter itself. But these last a long time with the diamond coating on the graphite. Um, if we were to cut this cutter, the, the steel cutter on the graphite, it would wear um, worse than cutting, cutting hardened steel. Uh, it's pretty amazing how much, how abrasive the graphite is. So that's why we use diamonds, uh, diamond coated cutters when cutting graphite. I wanna cover the time it takes, the time difference it takes between cutting graphite versus copper. Uh, what we found is the copper took 44 minutes to cut two electrodes, and in 14 minutes we cut gra three graphite electrodes. Uh, and these, this is POCO 3 and copper tungsten. So that's a big difference in timing to machine, especially if you're cutting a lot, um, a lot of electrodes. So that, that's, a, that's a huge gap in time and we're gonna compare benefits and, and all that. One thing I did uh, wanna talk about is when you have small details like we have here, in graphite typically, if you were to bump this or somebody was to drop it or hit it, um, it would just break off. The small little detail would break off. 
The problem with copper is if you actually bump it or hit it, it'll actually bend and move and you won't know it. And you'll think that trote is good and you'll go and put it in the machine and you'll burn it and all of a sudden your dimensions are way wrong. So it's real important to be very careful with the copper. It's very important to be careful with both but definitely the copper is not gonna break off and you won't know that it's got a problem until you've burned it if you haven't um, really take a good look at it before you burn. We're here with Brandon and we just finished cutting the POCO 3 trodes and we are gonna inspect them for dimensional accuracy, the overburn and the angle of our sword shape. So he is checking this on the Keonts machinist microscope. Let's see how good uh, the Makino cut the trotes. We have a couple different angles in here. There's a 45 degree and then is that one degree draft? I don't know. Yeah, one degree draft per side and then we have a 200 thousandths dimension on the rooftop across the rooftop area and then we're shooting for 5 thou overburn looks like these both checked out good the copper and the graphite so now we're going to go out there and burn them and it is going a lot slower than the graphite burn right now so it's uh it's something that we will have to get used to this is the result of the graphite uh, burn and the whole point of this style of burn is this is something that you really can't cut you have to we want sharp corners as much as we can in the corners here and the shape obviously is what we would consider you got to have a burn and, and you'd EDM that in there. So the results look really good. It took 21 minutes to do three passes uh, with POCO 3 and the results look really good. Here's our plan for this comparison that we're doing. This first blue sword shape that we're doing in here is going to be a, a direct comparison with POCO 3, three electrodes, three passes, um, and then versus copper tungsten, which is uh, gonna only have two passes. The biggest thing that we are learning about uh, copper tungsten is that it has a very low re wear rate. The burning is slower, but if it doesn't wear, you need less electrodes. So uh, there is a balance that can be achieved. So what we're gonna do is compare just one position with complete burn and then we're going to do a comparison with one electrode of, of graphite and then we're just going to burn all that all the way down and then burn each one with one electrode and see the progression of wear that we get on the graphite. Then we're going to do the same thing with the copper and we'll be able to compare both, um, both pieces of steel when we're done to see how much it actually wore on the steel, and then we'll actually compare the electrodes themselves to see how much they wore uh, in comparison to each other. Here's the first electrode. It has a little bit of wear on the very tip of this electrode, and the only way to really see it is uh, with this microscope. Uh, I'm gonna grab, that's electrode number one. Electrode number two, and I haven't gone over this much, but typically when you burn parts, 
you have, uh, you make a series of electrodes, typically between two and five electrodes, depending on machines and um, the intric intricacy of the actual burn. So if you have real tiny, tiny tolerances and very tight, sharp corners, you gotta have as many trodes as you need to make sure that you get the detail you're after. Um, in this case, um, you can typically get away with three electrodes on the Mitsubishi that we're running, and that's what we made here. And you can see this is the second electrode. It has a very little bit of, of wear on that very tip. And that is the number two. So here's the very final electrode, if I can get it in view real quick. It's not as easy, there it is. And that one does, still has a little bit of wear. And that's electrode number three. So as you go to a fine, fine finish, your wear will add up. So you get more wear on an electrode with a fine finish than you do in a roughing stage, which is different than I, than I would have thought, but that's the results and I've, I've seen it, so. All right, now that we burned this copper, um, it has a, a lot more wear than we expected. So the finishes look pretty good, except the electro did not burn down as far as it should have. Um, so we did some research, I made a phone call. It looks like in the machine in the Mitsubishi, if let's go into the settings here, we, were, we ran a setting of uh, copper. So in this electrode material, you can choose copper the CUW, which we didn't know what that was, uh, a low grade of graphite or a high grade of graphite. We chose the copper setting, and knowing that we've got copper tungsten, um, we called Mitsubishi and Jim Weirdo, which actually his last name is Weirdo, told us that this is the setting, the CUW is for copper tungsten. So we're going to show you what we found so far, and then Obviously we had the wrong setting in the machine, which does happen. So then we're gonna redo this excess, this, this burn. We're gonna do it on the back side of our blocks here. And we're gonna run the other side of our trodes, which are good, and we'll see how that works out. So stay tuned uh, in the next episode, we'll find out what the results are. This concludes our episode this month of copper versus graphite. Uh, as we dive into more of the differences, we're gonna see how the wear and the finishes turn out and talk more about some of the technical um, reasons for copper and technical reasons for graphite. And I'm actually gonna talk to someone from uh, POCO and get more technical about that. Stay tuned, remember to subscribe and like, and we'll see you next time. Okay, we're here with, stop, do it again. <laughs> I talk about the thing it.